Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Hey everybody, the old captain here, and uh, if you got a video request, or any kind of request, or you need a consultation, guidance, or wisdom, doesn't have to be on video, could be email, can be private, although everybody, like, it's kind of weird to me how everyone's like, yeah, just spread it out on the internet, put it on YouTube, like, alright, I will, did you give me money? Did you pay the extra fee so I have to, like, go and record? Alright, I'll put it on the internet. Anyway, go to assholeconsulting.com. Uh, we, I hate to say this because it, it has been so fucking ruined by leftists and touchy-feely social justice. Work. We actually are changing lives. We actually are. I'm getting the emails in. And people are like, dude, thanks for saving me from getting that fucking liberal arts degree and all this other crap. So, a <clears throat> uh, man who wants to be remain anonymous, he says, uh, keep me anonymous. Read this insane article. And it is batshit insane. Comment via video. And tell me what you think of this article. Beware, though, this woman has a history of attacking anyone who questions her. So if you don't want to respond, no problem. No, don't worry about it. I'm, if she is going to complain, she if she wants to, like, dox me or go hunt me down and complain to my employer, my employer is, uh, oh, it's me! Oh, I'm, I'm like, uh, like, invincible. I'm immune to this shit. Yeah, yeah. So I, it doesn't really matter, so I'll, I'll go ahead and... I would, I would kind of love it. Unfortunately, I've kind of like pre, pre-read the article. I don't think I really necessarily disagree with her, but her and I would certainly disagree like on philosophical matters. Anyway, so he uh, sent me a link by uh, uh, to an article by uh, to an article written by a Laura Penny, and uh, she's got her standard feminist profile, short haircut, even though she still wears makeup because she hates patriarchy, but still wear makeup anyway. Just wondering why feminists always... Here's another thing. Look up any feminist profile on a LinkedIn or a Facebook or some kind of thing or their website. They're always done up in glamour shots. It's like, dude, ain't that like fucking succumbing to the patriarchy? Why do you have makeup on? What the fuck? Yeah, I... Just a fucking higher than average IQ white man over here. Uh, so the title is, We Don't Need Female Viagra, We Need Feminism. So I'm going to read through this article, just warning you now. It's going to take a little bit to get through, so maybe pause, go get yourself a drink, get a cigar, and enjoy. So there's a pill to make women want to have sex. Feminism is all the Viagra I'll ever need. Don't don't prejudge because she actually has a point. I, hate, I, I actually think I'm going to side with her in, in some ways here. Heard about the new female Viagra? Of course you of course you have. No, I haven't. <laughs> we really haven't. Not as guys that we do, we don't care. We we're, we're so clocked out of society. Whatever the new wonder drug lacks in efficiency, coming as it does with a serious health warning if taken along with alcohol, it more than makes up for in branding. The campaign that finally got the drug approved by US regulators gave the impression of being an organic grassroots movement. But it's the little things that let it down. When PR companies try to run activist camp campaigns, a process known as astroturfing because of the fake grassroots involved, there is one mistake they always make. They're too good at it. Their websites are too slick, their videos are too viral, their connections are too convenient, and there's a curious lack of infighting and sniping over what the slogan should be and whose turn it is to do the biscuit run. So it is with even, quote, even the score, that's a, a campaign just to help you guys. So it is with, quote, even the score, you know, uh, which describes itself as a feminist movement fighting for women's rights to orgasm equality. <laughs> what's sad is this woman is deadly serious about it, and I agree with her on it. But what's really sad is that the rest of the normal sane world outside of feminism cannot tell the difference because they had what piss for equality now they have orgasm for equality you really can't tell you really can't thousands of women were persuaded to lobby congress with one aim and one aim only to get adye fibrinicerin also known as female viagra we're just going to call it female viagra uh, approved by the U.S. drug regulator after it had been rejected twice on safety grounds. Feminists around the world were mobilized by the, quote, coalition, running, quote, even the score, 
a coalition that includes some big drug companies, noticeably Sprout Pharmaceuticals, the firm that makes female Viagra. As a D-list digital feminist nano celebrity, you see, I got more respect for this gal as I read through it. I, I know you hate her because of ideological reasons. I probably hate her too. Her and I would not, if we're on the island, to get to guy kill her first thing. And I mean, and it's no disrespect to you. It's just we're not going to get along, and she'd say the same thing. I think we'd have a an agreement. But she, she's intellectually honest. She's displaying some intellectual honesty. She said, admits D-list nano. She knows her, and she's got 118,000 followers on the Twitter, and that's way more than me. Now, this is someone who's a little more grounded in reality than most of the average feminists I've seen, even though she wears makeup. So let's continue on. I've been inundated with requests to eulogize the product on TV and radio. When I questioned and even the score spokesperson on radio about its association with Sprout, she admitted that the company had bought table seats at a fundraising dinner, but otherwise the group keeps its financial operations largely hidden. Say what you like about Big Pharma hijacking feminist energy, and I'm about to, but it shows how far we've come. That feminism is now an approved marketing strategy shows us how powerful and culturally important the movement is. All the same, this is nothing to celebrate. There are enormous problems with the female Viagra campaign, and the first one is this. Feminism must not be co-opted by companies whose ultimate agenda is not women's welfare, but their own bottom line. I, I hate that. I apologize to my client. I agree with her. Um, and I disagree with feminism. I disagree with what it's become. I disagree with the anti-male slant it has. I disagree with the socialist have the government pay for everything. I disagree with it on ideological grounds. But in this particular case, this is, feminism is its own right. It is its own entity. It is its own group of people. And they have the right to be upset when some corporate douchebag comes in and astroturfs the fuck out of it. Like, look, hey, we're feminists. Yeah, we're feminists. I mean, what was it? Do you remember Wayne's World? Uh, the movie where the guy, the corporate douchebag comes, yeah, Wayne's World, we're Wayne's World. It's like that. I mean, I'm not saying the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Wait, the enemy of, yeah, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Um, but she's right. I, I mean, come on. You, you know, you got your guys' groups. You got your men's groups. Do you want a bunch of women coming into them? This is, you know, there should be sovereignty of various groups, be it athletic, economic, sexual, religious, any any way you want to categorize a group, that group has the right to sovereignty. And she is merely pointing out that corporate America is coming in, and pharmaceutical America is coming in and trying to hijack feminism, and it is totally astroturf. So I, 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 I kind of agree with her on this thing. Her and I would kill each other in about a nanosecond, but she has the right, and she's calling a spade a spade on this one. So far, so far. But we'll find out if there's like something... I can rip her apart on later. That isn't ideological. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, there are enormous problems with the female Viagra campaign, and the first one is this. Feminism must not be going to become... We read that before. Feminism is about putting more power in the hands of women, not putting more profit in the pockets of drug and cosmetics companies. But when feminists don't use cosmetics... Oh, wait, they do, because you do actually wear cosmetics. There's a zinger. You do wear cosmetics. Why are you wearing cosmetics? Feminist liberation is not ultimately something you can buy. It has to be taken sometimes by force yeah, at the expense of men. And don't worry, sweetheart, I got... It will be taken by force. We're not just going to give it to you. I have nothing against better living through chemistry. If there truly were a magic pill that made it possible to shag all night with the urgent stamina of an endangered rhinoceros, I'd be tempted. She's a good writer, too. I. She's good. But what uh, female Viagra is offering is less hedonistic, working as it does on the brain rather than the genitals. More worryingly, the disease it claims to be treating, hypoactive sexual desire disorder, or HSDD, is equally suspect. Yeah, you're just women. You don't like sex as much as men. That's why you got all the fucking power in the sexual market. As Rachel Hills, the author of The Sex Myth, told me, pharmaceutical companies didn't start talking about female sexual dysfunction because women were turning up to the doctors in droves complaining about their sex lives. They started talking about it because Viagra was such a gigantic commercial success. Technological and medical advances such as the pill and access to abortion 
have undoubtedly been central to feminism, so the one thing that makes even the score convincing is that the basic point is unarguable. Sexual liberation is a crucial part of women's liberation. And let me re even the score convincing is that the basic point is unarguable. Sexual... I gotta read my hand. All right, come on, Clary. Fresh eyes. Fresh eyes. Let's go. Wipe the bugs out of your eyes. So the one thing that makes even the score convincing is that the basic point is inarguable. Sexual liberation is a crucial part of women's liberation. But most of the things that stop women from pursuing and achieving sexual pleasure are not physiological. They are social. They are political. Rape culture, shelter, abuse, homophobia. Okay, yeah, here's where she, here's where she, like, goes into the, like, standard fucking feminist victimology but most of the things let's let's analyze this because my brain is telling me to be hung up on this but most of the things that stop women from pursuing and achieving sexual pleasure are not psych physiological they are social they are political rape culture sh uh, slut shaming abuse homophobia religious repression a culture that clings to the idea that sex is something men do to women rather than something people do together Look, you girls got to get over that. I'm, I'm sorry. Look, you want you want to be treated like men. You want to be treated as equal. This is where we will have a genuine disagreement and where she is, frankly, wrong. You want to be treated as equal? You should just fucking enjoy sucking cock as much as guys enjoy banging. I mean, really, you should enjoy it. And, and here you are coming up with all the excuses. Men come up with all the excuses to say yes to sex. Women come up with all the excuses to say no. Look at this. Presumably, I, from, the, from the context of it, she's a pro- uh, sex or pro, what did they call it? Yeah, I guess pro-sex feminist. And she's throwing up all this other fucking bullshit. Oh no, abuse, homophobia, rape, oh, oh, slut shaming. At any point in time, you can start spreading those legs. At any point in time, and you're not going to hear a whimper of complaint from men. Not one. But it. <clears throat> and I hate to say it, but she is intellectually honest. She probably actually believes in this stuff. She actually probably believes that, you know, you know oh, abuse, slut-shaming, and da-da-da-da-da. And, and meanwhile, she's passing up on, you know, like, yeah, 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 bang you. Put on some lipstick, put on some heels and thigh eyes, let's go. You're rape! I mean, her, her brain is predisposed and programmed to go to, you're taking advantage of me, you're abusing me. And at that point in time, you're just like, yeah, fuck it, I'm too old. And it looks like she's like about 30. So she's got 10 years left at best before men just never offer again. And, uh, and I, I, I'm sorry, what was your name? Eh, it doesn't matter. That's how it is. It's just, just how it is. I kind of feel an element of pity for this young woman. But regardless, all this and more is what prevents women from orgasm equality. No, you girls overthink it. <laughs> it, it this has nothing to do. Why, why make it so complicated? You girls, all, I remember, let me give you. There was this one time. The old captain, maybe one of the three girls I had sex with in my life. I think maybe maybe one of the two. Maybe it was four. I don't know. Maybe more than four. A little bit. This girl came in. We went off our night of dancing. And I don't know. I was on my game. This is when I was on fire. And we're going at it. You could just tell she was like completely uncomfortable. And I just stopped. I said, look, okay. Because it was, you know, there was no way I was going to have any fun with this. I'm like, look. Um, you can go home or you can learn to relax and actually enjoy what we're doing right now. Um, no, you're on birth control. There's no pregnancy scare. There's nothing to worry about right now. But if this is really uncomfortable for you, just go home. We're just going home. Otherwise, you can relax a little bit. And then the ooh and the e and the ah and the fireworks occurred. It is psychological for you girls. It just is. And it's not our problem, it's not men's problem, it's not patriarchy, it's not sexism, it's not misogyny. You girls, you, you, you said you wanted equality, and now, now you gotta man up. You gotta man up! And and you can relax, and you can enjoy. This is the one thing I think feminists and, and masculinists, or men's rights, or whatever you want to call them, is the one thing we agree upon, is that we kind of like sex. And it is not the men that have the problem with sex. We're generally pro-sex. It's the women that throw up all the fucking excuses in the world. And here, and, and all of this and more is what prevents women from orgasm equality. No, it's, what is it? I'm happy, feeling sad, I got sunshine in my head. And then it's, it's all in your head. That's it. It's all in your head, girls. 
So you're the ones that got to come up. You want to be men, you want to be equals, you got to come up to be our standards. You got to be as pro-sex as us men want to be. And it is all in your head. There is, and I understand. See, now, here's, here's why I'm being half intellectually honest and half just truthful. I know you girls, blah, blah, blah. We're equal. We're just like men. No, you're not. Because there's two million years of evolution that makes sure that you're not. You're just not. You're not men. So I take you at your word. Like, okay, you want to be men? Well, let's go fucking have sex. No, you girls still hold off on it. You want to why still hold off on it? Because two million years of evolution said if you slept with every guy, not only would you get a disease, you'd have so many children, you'd all fucking die. So there are huge psychological, Darwinistic, genetic programming reasons why you don't do it. And it causes great torment and suffering and strife and conflict within your own brain. But please don't lecture us men about how like you're oppressed about having sex. You're not. You, you, this, this is a laughable instance. This is the one thing I'll disagree with the woman on. You, you, at any point in time, you can have orgasm equality. If we're to take you at your face value that you are genuine equals to men, and, and I'm not talking like you are men, you could be treated exactly like men, you can fight in wars, you could be firefighters, well then you can have as many fucking orgasms. And if you're going to follow that premise, if you're going to follow that premise and say there's no difference between men and women, if you're going to adhere to that premise and, and abide by it, then it's your responsibility to orgasm the fuck up to relax the fuck down and enjoy sex for what it is. But I find it humorous. That's why I can be half intellectually honest. It's entertaining to see you girls like be so conflicted. I can't even just like men! Well, you want to go bang right now? Like fucking bigger. It's like, uh, well, okay, I guess you aren't like men. You aren't. You're not equals. I don't mean equals on like a, on like a moral equality. I mean like you're not the exact same. So, well, you know, but yeah, yeah, keep acting like you're men. Yeah, okay, yeah, we're going to treat you like men. Okay. <laughs> yes, there are physical ailments that could stifle a woman's sexuality. Quote, some of these are unequivocal medical issues, Hill says, like vaginismisme, vulvodyna, which makes it painful for women to have penetrative sex. It's interesting. Well, what percentage of women have that? Really, honest to God. Any any fucking any fucking technicality you girls can hide behind, you'll fucking throw it up. It's interesting to me that of all the sexual problems that can affect women, the one they've decided to create a drug for is not wanting to have sex enough. <laughs> it's when worlds collide. It's right there at that intersection. You girls want to be treated like guys. You want to be treated like equals. Men want to have sex more than women because girls don't like sex as much as men. It's true. That's how it is. And here you are bitching and whining about that fact. They're like, well, how dare they create a drug that makes women horny? It is, you know, I'm 40. I'm not old, but nor am I young. But it's just entertaining. I mean, I paid a, a, an insufferable price, as every man did in their post-pubescent years, and at least until the 30s. But now it's entertaining watching you feminists fucking deal with what you've created. It's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. The definition of HSDD is a persistent lack of interest in sex that causes distress to women or their partners. Oh my god, women are distressed about sex? Oh no, fucking call the fucking National Guard. You mean like boys were from 14 on? <clears throat> or the partners, ah, uh, there's the rub. The drug doesn't give you more orgasms. What it does, expensively, inefficiently, and with side effects, is make women more likely to consent to sex. The typical patient, once you dig into the literature, is supposed to be a woman in middle age who's upset because her partner is upset because she doesn't want to have sex with him. And isn't that the old age quandary? Well, yeah, that's how nature is. With all the shame and stigma and all the stress and worry, all the work we make them do endlessly and for free in the end of in and out of relationships, how do we get women to keep on saying yes to sex? Well, we can always drug them. We don't have to change. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is somebody forcing you girls to take these drugs? I wonder when, when when do women take agency? When do you girls take responsibility and say, oh, I married this guy. He married me under the context of the pretext that we'd, we'd have sex. And, and, oh, you just blow it up. And I mean, really, I mean, it, it is, is selflessness and altruism and consideration of others ever a thing? I, I mean, I, this girl, I don't even have to look up her profile. She's not married and I, I don't think she ever will be, but... 
For me, feminism is all the Viagra I'll ever need. Yeah, okay, there we go. I, I've ever needed. Feminism is what gave me slowly and over the years of growing and learning the confidence to claim ownership over my own body and my own desires as well as the strength to say no whenever I was more in the mood for a cup of tea and a cuddle. Yeah. I believe that women desire the right to pursue pleasure. They do. Women deserve the right to say yes to sex without shame or self-censorship. They do. But those rights are nothing without the right to say no, to refuse sex when we don't want it, and not to be humiliated or punished or made feel unnatural. Well, you, you have every right. No, I, I agree with that. Then don't take the drug. It's not women who are sick. It's society with its structural misogyny and crazy contradictory expectations, expectations of women that is sick as hell. And that's a much harder pill to swallow. Well, here, okay, Lori Penny. Lori, one of the best things I ever learned in life is that your value is determined by other people because there's nothing else in this world that's what is the spiders going to determine your value is the climate going to determine your value it is other humans that determine your value now how disengaged from humans and society you want to be is completely your right and sovereignty if you want to do the fucking Walden Pond or whatever it was <coughs> say you know what I don't want to adhere to society's standards. I'm going to do my own thing. Cool. Absolutely. Go and do that thing. But if you wish to participate in society, by default, that means you have to do what society wants. I would like to be paid to drink myself and play video games to death. That would be what I want. That's not going to offer a lot of value to society. And unfortunately for women, because of the way we're genetically programmed, most interest in women is sexual. Because half the population has a genetically programmed interest in them. Now, again, at any point in time, you could pull back from that. But you saying it's a sick society, it's structural misogyny, it's crazy. That's like you trying to piss into a hurricane. It's not going to change. It's it's a Newtonian physics. It's a uh, given. It's a premise. It's a, uh, what do they call it in math? Um... It, it, it's a, a given. It's a standard. It's 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 a it's already established. This is something that will not be changed. Now you could fight for the rest of your life, saying it's wrong men want to have sex. It's wrong that married men expect their wives to spread their legs. It's wrong. In the end, it is what it is. Women like tall men. I'm not a tall guy. I've accepted it because you know what? I'm not tall. Not gonna get any taller. I have to accept this. Black men say, hey, I'm a black guy. Might be some discrimination. And I think this is actually turning more, I think more and more black men are kind of like getting to this epiphany, especially within my circle of friends. They're like, you know what, I'm black. Yeah, there might be some discrimination, but you know what? I can't change it. Huh? Unless you're like that Rachel Dozel who fucking changes her race. <laughs> but anyway, hey, this is the, hey, he, these are the cards that have been dealt with. These are the rules of life. Now, you could piss away the next half of your life bitching and whining about how men like to have sex and women don't like to have sex as much. Uh, go ahead. I, it's not my life I'm wasting. But seriously, it's not misogynist. It's not crazy. It's not Well, it is structural. And it's not sick as hell. It is what it is. And the sooner you realize that and you operate by that premise, like I had to operate by the premise, people have, I have to give what people want. If I want to participate in society, if I want to have a relationship, either be it a friendly, platonic relationship or a romantic one, I have to give something of value to them that they would give in return to me their finite time in life. I just wonder if feminists, you know, do you have the video game syndrome where like, only you are the truly sentient entity and everything else is just a Nazi you're shooting up on a first-person shooter? Like, they're not sentient entities? Like, oh, I just... Eh. So anyway, uh, I apologize for the length of the video, uh, but it was a, a lengthy and so involved article, and, and I do agree with her general premise, but you're, you're arguing with someone who is flawed on her premises. Um, yeah, feminism has every right not to be astroturfed. Absolutely. But... It, it, it just degrades into typical standard short haired cut woman who still wears makeup even though she claims to be a feminist type person. Anyway, so best luck to all of you. Toodles.